Appendix B The Cinderin Princes of the Sylvan Elves In Appendix B to The Lord of the Rings, in the headnote to The Tale of Years of the Second Age, it is said that before the building of the Baradur, many of the Sindar passed eastward, and some established realms in the forests far away, where their people were mostly sylvan elves. Thranduil, king in the north of Greenwood the Great, was one of these. Something more of the history of these Sindarin princes of the sylvan elves is found in my father's late philological writings. Thus, in one essay, he says, Thranduil's realm is said to have extended into the woods surrounding the Lonely Mountain and growing along the west shores of the Long Lake before the coming of the dwarves exiled from Moria and the invasion of the dragon. The elvish folk of this realm had migrated from the south, being the kin and neighbours of the elves of Lorien. But they had dwelt in Greenwood the Great, east of Anduin. In the Second Age their king Orifer, the father of Thranduil, father of Legolas, had withdrawn northward beyond the Gladden Fields. This he did to be free from the power and encroachments of the dwarves of Moria, which had grown to be the greatest of the mansions of the dwarves recorded in history. And also he resented the intrusions of Celeborn and Galadriel into Lorien. But as yet there was little to fear between the Greenwood and the mountains, and there was constant intercourse between his people and their kin across the river, until the War of the Last Alliance. Despite the desire of the Sylvan Elves to meddle as little as might be in the affairs of the Noldor and Sindar, or of any other people, dwarves, men, or orcs, Orifer had the wisdom to foresee that peace would not return unless Sauron was overcome. He therefore assembled a great army of his now numerous people, and joining with the lesser army of Malgalad of Lorien, he led the host of the Sylvan Elves to battle. The Sylvan Elves were hardy and valiant, but ill-equipped with armour or weapons in comparison with the Eldar of the West. Also they were independent, and not disposed to place themselves under the supreme command of Gil-galad. Their losses were thus more grievous than they need have been, even in that terrible war. Malgalad and more than half his following perished in the great battle of the Dagorlad, being cut off from the main host and driven into the dead marshes. Orifer was slain in the first assault upon Mordor, rushing forward at the head of his most doughty warriors, before Gilgalad had given the signal for the advance. Thranduil, his son, survived. But when the war ended and Sauron was slain, as it seemed, he led back home barely a third of the army that had marched to war. Malgalad of Lorien occurs nowhere else, and is not said here to be the father of Amroth. On the other hand, Amdir, father of Amroth, is twice said to have been slain in the Battle of Dagorad, and it seems, therefore, that Malgalad can be simply equated with Amdir. But which name replaced the other, I cannot say. This essay continues. A long peace followed, in which the numbers of the Sylvan Elves grew again. But they were unquiet and anxious, feeling the change of the world that the Third Age would bring. Men also were increasing in numbers and in power. The dominion of the Numenorean kings of Gondor was reaching out northwards towards the borders of Lorien and the Greenwood. The free men of the north, so called by the elves because they were not under the rule of the Dunedain and had not for the most part been subjected by Sauron or his servants, were spreading southwards, mostly east of the Greenwood, though some were establishing themselves in the eaves of the forest and the grasslands of the vales of Anduin. More ominous were rumours from the further east. The wild men were restless. Former servants and worshippers of Sauron, they were released now from his tyranny, but not from the evil and darkness that he had set in their hearts. Cruel wars raged among them, from which some were withdrawing westward, with minds filled with hatred, regarding all that dwelt in the west as enemies to be slain and plundered. But there was in Thranduil's heart a still deeper shadow. 
He had seen the horror of Mordor and could not forget it. If ever he looked south, its memory dimmed the light of the sun, and though he knew that it was now broken and deserted and under the vigilance of the kings of men, fear spoke in his heart that it was not conquered forever. It would arise again. In another passage, written at the same time as the foregoing, it is said that when a thousand years of the Third Age had passed, and the shadow fell upon Greenwood the Great, the Sylvan Elves, ruled by Thranduil, retreated before it as it spread ever northward, until at last Thranduil established his realm in the northeast of the forest, and delved there a fortress and great halls underground. Orifer was of cinder in origin, and no doubt Thranduil his son was following the example of King Thingol long before in Doriath though his halls were not to be compared with Menegroth. He had not the arts, nor the wealth, nor the aid of the dwarves, and compared with the elves of Doriath, his sylvan folk were rude and rustic. Orifer had come among them with only a handful of Sindar, and they were soon merged with the sylvan elves, adopting their language and taking names of sylvan form and style. This they did deliberately, for they, and other similar adventurers forgotten in the legends or only briefly named, came from Doriath after its ruin, and had no desire to leave Middle-earth, nor to be merged with the other Sindar of Beleriand, dominated by the Noldorin exiles for whom the folk of Doriath had no great love. They wished indeed to become sylvan folk, and to return, as they said, to the simple life natural to the elves, before the invitation of the Valar had disturbed it. Nowhere, I believe, is it made clear how the adoption of the sylvan speech by the Sindarin rulers of the sylvan elves of Mirkwood, as described here, is to be related to the statement cited at the end of Appendix A to the Lord of the Rings, that by the end of the Third Age, sylvan elvish had ceased to be spoken in Thranduil's realm. Refer further to the discussion of Thranduil's realm within the disaster of the Gladden Fields.